brothers, <coughs> dear followers, dear uh, brethren in the Lord. Um, I thank the Lord for this grace. I salute you in the mighty name of Jesus. I salute you in the mighty name of Jesus. I greet you um, here. Uh, here is uh, Christ Gospel Echo, and uh, I'm very happy to be with you, to share this moment with you right now, right here. Today is another day or to experience. We know that the Lord's word is not only word, but the word of the Lord is also spirit and life. That's why he said, so you want to experience the life of the spirit, which is hidden in the word of God and through Christ Gospel Echo, you encourage people to uh, be more um, relevant in their Christian and faith experience through uh, practical, you know, um, and accuracy experiences in the Lord. So that's the purpose of our life. Um, you know, um, we are here not to boost ourselves, not to promote ourselves, but we are here to, uh, you know, um, help out those who need and help who need to improve their, 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 their perfect their, their faith, perfect their ways in the Lord according to His Word in order for them to be uh, effic efficacious in this uh, particular time of the of our generation okay yeah strongly strongly believe that uh, this is going to come to pass that the, the the ways of the lord the name of the lord is going to be highly exalted in our generation uh, in this season because we believe that um you know the word of the lord prevail over everything else and there's a need uh, you know, ready to have your uh, something to take notes, like a notebook or something, or a recorder, and verify with us the scriptures. Um, today you are diving, you're going to dive into a subject, you're going to dive into, um, um, you know, uh, the Word of God, you're going to start our journey and I encourage you to be with us, to follow with us through uh, the scriptures. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, get your Bible and follow with us. You are sharing lives here. You are not sharing our thoughts. You are not sharing, trying to share uh, our preferences. You are trying to share, you know, the thought of the Lord according to his word. So that's it. So before starting, before moving forward, um, I would like to pray by the name of the by, by, by Christ Jesus. Um, Lord God, I thank you for this special moment. I thank you for your grace, for your favor of our lives. Lord, we love you, we need you. We, 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 we bless you for everything that you have done. Thank you for taking um, control of this life. Inspire us, inspire everything that is going to be said, share in your in your name. Uh, glorify you you want to capture the essence of your 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 divinity of you lord in this particular moment uh, grant us access to you grant us access to your mind grant us access to the light that we need in order for us to be efficacious in this generation lord we subject everything under your power you proclaim your kingdom i proclaim your name here let your name be glorified then your kingdom come Amen, amen, and amen, amen. So, um, yeah, that's it. So, dear brothers, so the subject of the day is the spirit of God's urge. The spirit of God's urge. It's going to be a very spiritual word that is going to be shared. This is going to be announced and proclaimed today. Uh, the spirit of the Lord or the spirit of God's urge, okay? Uh, yes, the spirit of God's urge. And uh, you need to know something, dear brothers. Christ's gospel echo um, emphasizes the gospel of Christ, the message of Christ. And the spirit of God's urge, why this 
um, topic. The reason why is that you need to know something. Everything that you're trying to share, you're trying to, uh, you know, uh, bring, every truth that we want to share to bring forth here, it's the product of uh, inquiring in the Spirit. By the grace of the Lord, by the grace of God, we believe in the divine interaction. We believe that God speaks. We believe that God is real. We believe that, I believe strongly that God speaks. God created us um, to look like Him, to be, to bear His image. He created us to be like Him. He created us to be like Him so that we can speak, you can talk, you can act, you can move, you can interact as God does. You understand what I'm saying? And so at that point, that means that God is alive. God is a living God. God speaks and God reveals its emergency. He reveals his priorities. He reveals his thoughts and his mind to everyone who, um, who access, to whom access is granted to, to, to discover. So our responsibility as Christians, as people of God, is to uh, align with all the protocols and requirements that enables us to, to access the mind of God in our lives, in our generation. And no uh, institution and no um, people except the people of God has been um, uh, granted the access of his mind except the church. And, you know, the, 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 the target of this, for us, the Spirit of God urge, I think is a subject that is very interesting in this particular time of the humanity where people deny God's existence, where people deny, uh, you know, the existence of the supernatural and, uh, you know, prefer to lock up themselves in, you know, uh, lies and hypocrisy, claiming that there is no God or even though they don't say that there's no God, they act so. They act as if there was there, there was there is no God. They don't they don't uh, you know um, associate God, or they don't want to associate God to anything that they do. And our society is losing value. Our society is losing uh, gain. Is losing uh, perception and visions and light. Um, you know uh, in uh, in in this in this specific time because we lose the essential we lose the essence of existence which is God himself so the spirit of God's urge tonight let's um, take a verse in Matthew chapter 3 I'm going to read chapter chapter 3 from verse 11 uh, verse the verse 11 we're going to read two uh, two or more scriptures, like at least three, and then you're going to talk a little bit about this, the, 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 the spirit, the urge of the spirit, okay? Uh, John the Baptist was talking to the people right here. So in John chapter 3, verse 11, the Bible says this, I indeed baptize you with water into repentance, but he that cometh after me is my children and I, Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Amen. So I want to tell you something. The Bible says that John the Baptist, you heard, you certainly probably heard about it. Um, before moving forward, I greet all the people uh, right now with us, um, connected. You know, those who just joined, those who are about to join, those who are going to um, watch this video through our YouTube channel or whatever, uh, through whatever, whatever channel they're going to receive this video. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus and where the peace and the grace of the Lord be upon you. So from Europe, from wherever you are following, um, the United States, where we are now, the Africa, Asia, everywhere, I greet you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. So let's dive straight into it. So I'm saying that John the Baptist came to proclaim and announce 
a era, an era, a, 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 an era, a period of time, a new cycle of things. And he came, he spoke, he spoke, he preached the gospel, he preached, and he said this, he said, indeed I baptize you, he came to baptize people uh, with water into repentance. So he proclaimed the message of repentance, the, the word of repentance to, you know, prepare the people to meet their God. He, he just spoke a message to let the people know that, okay, you have been short of the glory of God. You need to come back. You need to amend your ways. You need to amend your thoughts. You need to, you know, uh, uh, you know, move back to the Lord. You need to, uh, you know, change your mind about uh, what you were doing. So change. Have a different approach of God because the way you approach God is wrong. So he spoke to the people for repentance. Repentance is this change of mind that everyone should, is supposed to look after and uh, sorry, look for, um, you know, in order for us to align with the thought of God. So he spoke that message and he says, but I'm, I'm here to talk about repentance. Repentance is important. I want to tell you something. The, the gospel of God starts with repentance. You cannot benefit from the gospel of God without repentance. Repentance introduces uh, in God's, uh, uh, you know, uh, platform, uh, on God's platform. So through repentance, you access God because nobody who access God will, will, will shoot without repentance. Will, you will without repentance. You need repentance to access God. Why? Because all of us are guilty before the rap, before the justice, before the court system of God. There's a court system that judges all sinners. And this is the righteous court system of God. This court system is righteous because the wages of sin is death, according to Romans 6, 23. So we need, when you approach God, to be humble enough to recognize that, okay, our lives are not really uh, uh, pleasant to God. Our lives are not, uh, you know, um, uh, doesn't, uh, don't match. Our lives don't match. The, the 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 requirement of god we are not uh, approved by god unless we repent ourselves so repentance introduces us to forgiveness repentance introduces us to mercy repentance introduces us to grace repentance introduces us to the favor of god without repentance you can obtain whatever from god so you need repentance so john the baptist came to repent before everything else to happen you need repentance so i want to tell something to someone you are a Christian. You are maybe not. A, you are maybe not a Christian. You are following this live right now. I want to tell you something. Uh, our interest on this uh, live, on this live, is God. God's purpose for us. God's plan for us. God's will for us in this generation. And I want to tell you something. Since the time of John the Baptist, the era of repentance have been introduced. So everyone who want to, who, who will to approach God, should repent. You understand what I'm saying? Should repent, uh, for uh, to abandon sin, to forsake sin, a sinful lifestyle, and to be back to the Lord. So he, pre he came and preached that message of repentance. He was baptizing people for repentance purpose. So the purpose of John the Baptist ministry was to gain repentance, to obtain repentance from the people, to allow people to uh, mingle with repentance, to uh, you know practice repentance, you know to. Uh, you know, uh, grow in repentance, to accept repentance, the repentance uh, lifestyle as a standard of life. Because, uh, you know, all men have been created to relate with God. But because of sin, as you know, uh, we are far away from God. So the repentance comes to solve the problem of sin, to help out so, uh, so that you may be get closer to God, so that you may be reco reconciliated with God by the cross of jesus christ and that's the heart of the gospel repentance so john the baptist was the the, the one preparing you know uh, the way of salvation the way of the lord in order for the people to meet their god so repentance so he said i baptize you verse 11 of matthew 3 with water into repentance but he says this he adds this he said but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. So there's a mightier, a mightier uh, being, a mightier person coming after me. And he was talking about Jesus Christ. When you read the, the book of John chapter 1, 
And yeah, he spoke about Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, verse 29. Would take off uh, uh, the, the would take would take off the, the the sin from the world. You know, so he said, Who that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire. So he came and he announces that Jesus Christ came to introduce people to the era of the Spirit. He will baptize you with the Spirit and fire. So before the Spirit, or in order for us to access the Spirit, you need repentance. Repentance is the key. Repentance is the key. So everyone who will will to experience Jesus Christ and his ministry must accept repentance first. That's why that's the reason why Jesus, John the Baptist came. You will never experience the fullness of Christ without repentance. That's why many people claiming to know God, claiming that they know Jesus, without repentance, they are just lying. Many people rise in our generation or rose in our generation saying, we know Jesus, Jesus is a great master, Jesus is this, Jesus and that. Without repentance, without accepting that before the righteous God system of God, you are guilty, you were bad, you were wrong, you were corrupted, and you need a, a, an act of mercy, an act of forgiveness, an act of grace from God in order for you to be, uh, you know, uh, forgiven, in order to you to be restored. With if you don't do that, there is no way for you to, to there is no way for you to know Jesus Christ. So repentance is the key. Okay, repentance is the key. And I call someone right here, right now, on repentance. Let me tell you something. That's the first. Uh, layer of the the message of tonight repentance is not necessary uh, a need only for people who have um, apparent apparent sin like sins that appear sins that are visible sins that can maybe seen straight away when you look at the people you see them with doing certain things which are uh, you can just notice and you just say that this person is a sinner no the sin is not about what we do first. The sin is about what we are. And I want to tell you something. All human person, all human being, no, no matter, regardless of what you do, if we did not repent previously because of the gospel of Christ, if we did not acknowledge the righteous court system of God, uh, that just uh, make us all guilty because no one can please God. No one can... Be acceptable uh, before the the, the the divine standard of righteousness that God has established. We all need the mercy of God. We need to be made perfect. You need to be made saint. You need to be made uh, forgiven. You need to be made you know uh, people that God wants. If you are not you are not been um, you never experience you know this transformation. You will never be approved by God. Being approved by God is not a matter. Of your effort is not a matter of your will is not the matter of uh, you, you know your capacity your abilities it's the matter of God making you God must transform you after uh, uh, after being forgiven after being uh, you know reconciliated with God God by his sovereignty by his power now operate a process making making you now his people you know, so you are transformed, you are, uh, you know, um, changed by the action of God. And the, the, the way, the, through which God does it is through the Spirit. Okay? So, that's why the Bible says this in John chapter 1, verse 11. I'm going to read that one very quick. And then you're going to move on. I want to talk about the, uh, the Spirit of God urge in our generation. God, uh, dear friends, dear brothers, we need... There is an urge concerning the Spirit of the Lord in our generation. The Spirit of the Lord should not be, is not an option for a man. It's like fish in water. Water is not an option for a fish. Water is a must-have for a fish. Without water, it's dead. Without water, it's disqualified for life. Even though it's a beautiful fish, even though it's big, but that's the thing. So let's read from verse 12. Of John 1 John, uh, John 1 chapter verse 12 the Bible said that as many as receive him to them gave he power to become sons of God even them that believe in his name 
which were born not of blood, nor from the for, for, of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So being born of God, it talks about the new, you know, new birth. You know, so it says that those who receive Him, as many receive, him, not all, many will receive Him. He gave them the capacity or the power. This power, this capacity is the Spirit of God to become sons of God. So I want to tell you something. All men are not sons or child, children of God. At the uh, since the fall of Adam, you have been disqualified uh, in the way that you are not child or children of God or sons of God anymore. All of us, but some those or many who has received the word of God, who has received Christ, because when we read the verse fourteen, the verse fourteen says this. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the word has been made flesh, and you know what this verse talks about. It talks about God who made himself flesh, who revealed himself through a person, Christ Jesus. It was God made flesh. In order for us to receive the Spirit, He wanted to give us the Spirit. He wanted to introduce us to the Spirit, but because God's the Bible says that in John fourteen, uh, sorry John four, that God is Spirit. God is Spirit. The nature of God is Spirit. So Jesus Christ came to uh, baptize us to introduce us in the Spirit realm. You understand what I'm saying? You spoke about that, but today you want to talk about the urge, the Spirit of God's urge. The urge of the Spirit of God. There is a nudge of the Spirit. We need the Spirit more than ever. Because there is a problem. You're going to talk about it. And you're going to talk about the this Spirit of God urge. So let's take another verse. So this the first verse that we took, Matthew 3 verse 11, says that the only person that baptized, that introduced to the Spirit of God um, in the Spirit is Jesus Christ. No one else can introduce you to the Spirit and the Spirit is more than either. Why? Because God is Spirit. In John chapter, let's read John chapter 4 very quick that I gave you. The Bible says this in John chapter 4, verse 22. The Bible says this, verse 22 to 24. The Bible said that we worship you, we know. Well, let this verse 23, 23 to 24. Okay. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is looking for people to worship in spirit and in truth, right? God is spirit, and they worship. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So, God is spirit. The nature of God is spiritual. It's God is invisible. God is is not, um, you know, um, like us. God is not subject to the same, you know, rules. Of the physical of the visible realm like us god is invisible god is spiritual and those who want to relate with god must be introduced to the spirit realm if you don't know the spirit realm laws and rules and protocols you can relate with god because god is spirit that's why he said that god is a spirit that's why those who worship him must do it in spirit and in truth we need the spirit you need the truth of god the word of god the truth of god uh, and the Spirit of God, those two tools help you to relate with God. Without the Word of God, you can relate with God. We don't relate with God just because we are on earth and you breathe oxygen. No. The, the fact is, many of us are there, but we don't know about God. You don't know that much about God. And if you are listening to me, and God is a mystery for you, this uh, world, this life of today must be, uh, uh, you must have an interest with this life. And I want you to pay very atten attention to this. Because probably a key through this life must, will be given to you to help you out about your relationship with God, about your existence on this earth. You have been created to relate with God. From the beginning, God created Adam and Eve to relate. Adam was a person who has the capacity to relate with God. He was able to talk to God. He was able to interact with God. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, that on the cool of the day, the voice of the Lord was there in the garden, seeking for Adam. Adam, Adam, where are thou? 
God was looking for Adam. God was relating with Adam. And men have been created to relate with God. It's abnormal. It's not abnormal. It's a mess that men are now ignorant about God. They can't relate with God. They can't talk to God. And they find it normal. Today, everyone accept, Everyone has accepted the fact that we cannot talk to God. It's a lie. It's not true. If you don't talk to God, if you don't relate with God, you are not alive. You are dead. Because God is the source of life. Man has been created to relate with God as the fish has been created to live in water. Without water, the fish is dead. Without God, men are dead. And without God, many are short of the glory of God, which means that the very, very important element, a very important component of our lives is God himself. Without God, we are dead. We live, but we are dead bodies. You understand? We are there on earth, but... Our life does not find meaning, neither expression. And through God, our life can find expression. Our life can find meaning. There's a meaning uh, for our life when we relate with God. That's why in Christ's gospel, one of the first targets of uh, the gospel of Christ was to reconciliate man with God. You understand what I'm saying? In, one, in one Corinth, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he said, he gave us the ministry of reconciliation for us to be reconciliated with God. You understand? And I want to tell someone, reconciliate yourself with God. Today, the era we are part of is an era where men have been reconciliated with God. It happened, it happened 2000, almost 2,000 years ago. Men have been reconciliated through the blood of Christ, through the sacrifice of the cross. It is no more, uh, you know, um, right now, uh, a reality like you are strangers about God. We are foreigners about God. It's no more uh, something that we should experience because the, 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 the data has changed. God made us part of his, his, his kingdom. God reconciliated with us through Jesus Christ. You know, so I want to tell you something that men have been created to relate with the spirit, but because of sin, men have been separated. And now, why the spirit of God urge? What's going on? Uh, we need God to worship. We need God to live. Times have come in the verse of John chapter 4. He, he was announcing that uh, the time would come where true worshippers, men have been created to worship. Men have been created to relate with God. Without worship in your life of God, you are dead. You have been created for that. Either you like it or not. A fish will say, I don't like water. But the problem is that even though if it does not like water, without water, it can live. So we don't relate with water because you love water first, but you relate with water because it's needy. It's, it's, it's a need. You don't breathe oxygen because you love oxygen. Without oxygen, you die. So we breathe oxygen because it's a vital element of our life. And we relate with God. For men, God is not first needed because we love him. God is needed because we need him first. And then on the strength of that, we learn how to love him. Loving God is a choice. Loving God is something that comes uh, uh, out of a relationship. But how would you relate with something that we don't, uh, we are not aware of, uh, of the, you know, the vital need? You understand what I'm saying? You start to love her or oxygen because you, you have a relationship. You understand the needs of it. So there's an urge for the Spirit of God in our life. You need to understand that without the Spirit of God, you are dead. We are without hope on earth. We are without, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, expression on earth. You will be on earth as dead bodies walking around. And this is not the purpose of our existence. So I want to talk about the Spirit of God urge. The Gospel of Christ comes to unlock the realities of the spirit and let's take a verse in 1 corinthians chapter uh, 2 i want to try to be straight uh, i don't want to waste so much time so i'm trying to just uh, lay some foundations uh, while we are diving into that subject okay so what the bible says in here the bible says this verse 10 let me read from verse 10 of 2 Corinthians chapter 2. We are talking about the spirit of God's church in our generation. So let's read from verse 10 to verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The Bible says this, but God has revealed them into us by his spirit. God revealed things to us by his spirit. And the spirit searches all things. 
hear the deep things of God. So the Spirit helps us to go in deeper relationship. The Spirit of God uh, allows us to, to, to touch deeper things. And in verse 11, he says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? So the Spirit that is in us knoweth us. But even so, thing, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God allows us to, to touch the deeper things of God, to understand the deeper things of God. You will never know God except through His Spirit. We need the Spirit. The Spirit is, uh, you know, it's the link, it's the connection. I spoke about those things uh, many times, but for you today following us, the Spirit is needed. The Spirit is like a device that allows you to get in touch with things of the Spirit. When they say Spirit of man, there's a part of us that is invisible that allows us to touch the Spirit realm. In the same way that our body gives us access to the physical world, through our body, our soul can relate with the physical world, right? In the same way, our spirit man or our, uh, yeah, the Spirit of the man, every man has a spirit, it's like a device allowing you to relate with the spirit world. There's the word, the invisible world, and with what we call the spirit. Everyone has a spirit. Now, what's going on? The Bible says that God also has a spirit. And through his spirit, his spirit gets attached with our spirit. There's a connection between the spirit of God and our spirit. There's a link. And then the spirit of God can relate with the spirit of man. That's how you communicate with God. If you follow this, you know, yeah, that's how the Spirit of God communicates with the Spirit of man. There is a link, Spirit to Spirit. So, Spirit communicates with Spirit. If you don't connect with the Spirit of God, your Spirit will be connected with something else because you have many Spirits that exist on earth. The Spirit of God is the strongest one. The Spirit of God is the genuine genuine one, the, the true Spirit. But we have other different Spirits that exist. So, we need the Spirit of God to occupy our Spirit to fill our spirit so that we may be relate, related, uh, you may be in touch with God, you may be connected with God at all time. And through that link, our life is influenced by God. Our life finds meaning in God. Our life finds destiny in God because God is the source of our life. And if we, there is no connection between us and God, we can di discover the meaning of our life, the reason of our existence. We can find relevance on earth because God created us for his purpose and you need to be related with him to understand that. So there is a need, there is an urge for the spirit of God in our generation. There is an urge, we need the spirit of God. Let me tell you something. The relevance of a man on earth is not his money. The Bible says that the, the life of a man does not depend on money. It's not about how much car you have, how much clothes you are, how much money you have in your bank account because all those things are going to be left over, left here, when you leave, when you die. So the things that are more relevant is your relationship with God through His Spirit. Because the spiritual connection with God has no expiration date. Okay? And it's forever. It's a connection forever. It's something that is eternal. Okay? So the Bible says this, that no one know, knows the, 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 the truth of God, the deep things of God, except the Spirit of God. So you need the Spirit to understand God. And Adam lose, lost sorry, his connection with God when he sinned. Adam and Eve, they lost it. Our, our, our ancestors lost it. So uh, uh, Jesus Christ came out as a, a, a provider of restoration for the connection with God. That's why he came to baptize with the Spirit. So let me tell you something. At the point I'm talking to you, if you have no spiritual connection, you are dead on earth. Let me tell you the truth. Everything that you see happening on earth depends on spirit. Spirit governs our realm, governs our reality, governs our society, governs our economy. Spirit governs how man moves on earth. Without spirit, there is no life on earth. Why? Because the life of men are first of all spiritual. That's why I'm trying to tell you. So you need the spirit of God to understand what is going on in our on our lives and to discover our own identity and then when you move forward a little bit the bible says in verse 12 now 1 corinthians 2 chapter 12 we have received not the spirit of the world so there is a spirit in the world 
In the world we live in, there is a spirit. It is called the spirit of the world. You have two types of spirit that exist. There is the spirit of the world. He said, you have not received, yeah, but you have, you have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, and we might know, that we might know the things that are fully given to us of God. Amen. So, you, you have two spirits. The spirit of God and the spirit of the world. The spirit of the world is a spirit. And the spirit of the world is a system. And the spirit of the world operates in the invisible world to influence this earth. The whole world that you see as a spirit. There's a spirit controlling the world that we, we, we live in. The Bible talks about it in 1, 1 John chapter 5, verse 9. Uh, let me read that verse real quick. So 1 Corinthians, uh, no, so 1 John chapter 5, sorry. Uh, chapter 5, very quick. Talking about the spirit of the world. What is that spirit? The Bible says this in verse 19. And we know that we are of God. We are of God, children of God, sons of God. And the whole world lieth in wicked, wickedness. The whole world lies on wickedness, or in the spirit of wickedness. So there is a spirit that controls the whole world. But for us, those, those who are believers, you are separated from the world, not by flesh, not by our physical location, but by spirit. Let me tell you something. Um, you may be part of the world, or you might be separated from the world spiritually. All men are either partakers of the world, or separated from the world. And it's spiritually. It's not according to the fact that you take uh, something to go on Mars, planet Mars. No. It's about spirits. Because you are part of the world by spirit and you are separated from the world by spirit. The spirit makes the differences, the differences between us on earth. Some people are partakers of the system of the earth. They are partakers of this, the, the, because the spirit of the world affect their soul, their mind, their spirit, and governs their life. So they can do things except according to the world. They do as the world does. They, they, they move according to the movement of the world. They, they are influenced by the fashions of the world. They speak the language of the world. They are attracted by the attraction of the world. So the mindset of the world governs their lives, and they live according to their generation, which is perverse, which is corrupted, which is blinded, which is in darkness, they live according to it because by spirit, they are attached to it. So the spirit of the world governs their life. That's what I'm trying to talk. That's what I'm trying to tell. So the spirit is the real, uh, you understand, source of life. According to the, your spirit, you live on earth. So the, 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 when you see people living in a certain way, which uh, according to their habit, their tradition, their preferences and everything, this is the the, the display of their spiritual state. You understand what I'm saying? So you do things according to the spirit. You talk according to the spirit. And when you read the verse that is what we took, the Bible says that you have two spirits, the spirit of the world, but for us believers, Jesus Christ came to give us, that's why Jesus Christ came to deliver us by spiritual means. Because the, 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 the fall of man is spiritual. The captivity of man is spiritual. The, 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 you know, the sicknesses of men are spiritual. The, the, you know, everything that happened to us was spiritual. That's why when Jesus Christ came as a savior, he came to deal with the spiritual condition of man. He did not come to change our ex external appearance, whatever. That's why the word of God, first of all, changes your spirit and your inside. It's not about your outside, it's about your inside, your mind and your spirit. And when you read, he says what? Verse uh, so you, you receive, you have two spirits, verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the word which man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of God teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So our language is also spiritual. Let me tell you something. It's a time where you need to be spiritual. All men are called to be spiritual. The spiritual condition of a man is more important than his physical condition. It's more important than his financial condition. If spiritually you are sick, you are sick. 
If spiritually you are blinded, you are blind. If spiritually you are ignorant, you are ignorant. And spirit is not about, I think, I, a concept of things. It's not about your personal opinion. It's about facts. Okay? It's about facts. And I want to talk about those facts when you move on. Okay? It's about facts. Some symptoms shows that your spirit or your life is affected spiritually and you need to understand that it's like when you go to the doctor when certain things happen to you we can determine that you have covid 19 you can determine by the symptoms that you have uh, hiv or you have cancer or you have this disease or this disease why because the symptoms and the fact talks or makes uh, us understand that there's something going on in the same way the life of a person also as some indicators that are used as thermometers to understand what is the spiritual condition of this person. That's what I'm talking about. So as a man, you need in the same way that you read your news, you read your, your vitals when you go to the doctor with the thermometers, with the pools and everything to identify the type of sickness or the type of state your body is expressing in the same way some vitals, the spiritual vitals the way you talk, the way you can observe some vitals, those some spiritual vitals, indicates us what is going on in your life spiritually. And this wisdom is not a wisdom that you learn at school. This wisdom to identify what is going on in the life, spiritual life of a person is given by the word of God and by the knowledge of God. That's why you need God to understand our lives. Otherwise, you are going to be earth a living person, oxygen breathing people, taking more care of our body, but dead inside of us. Because spiritually, you are blinded, you are ignorant, and you are completely subjected by the power of the spirit of this world. So, the gospel of Christ comes to ignite our mind to illuminate us concerning the true state of our life. That's why, that's why there is a spiritual the spirit of God's urge in our generation. We need the spirit of God. We need this wisdom. Go ahead and read this verse, the, the verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It talks about the wisdom of God to understand spiritual things. And when you read, it says what well, this the, the, the language that we speak, the words as words that does not come from the, the wisdom of men, but those words come from the spirit of God. Comparing spiritual with spiritual. Don't compare spiritual with carnal. Don't compare spiritual with flesh. Don't compare spiritual with your, your master degree, your economic, uh, your economic degrees, your uh, medical degrees, your whatever commercial marketing degrees. Don't compare spiritual things with mathematics. No, it doesn't work. Spiritual needs to be compared with spiritual. And the spiritual part of your life as a measurement is the word of God and the spirit of God. It doesn't matter you like it or not, what I'm saying. But there is a surge of the Spirit of God in our generation. That's what I'm trying to tell. Especially in the United States of America here, people need the Spirit. We are so much focused on things that belong to our physics, our physical, our being, our, our body. We are so much focused on everything that is visible with our eyes but you know understand that the economy of life is more based on invisible and spiritual things you need to master the invisible according to god because jesus christ came to baptize us with the spirit for us to be immersed in the spirit realm and the spirit realities hallelujah amen that's the truth i'm not lying i'm not trying to you know play you i'm trying to tell you truth. many people get slain get you know, uh, cut off, swallowed up in this generation by the spirit of the world. I'm telling you the, the truth. I'm telling you. So when you move forward a little bit, what's going on? The Bible says, verse 14, that's the first thing that we discover concerning the spiritual reality. The Bible says that the natural man receive not the things of the spirit of God for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So, the first type of man that the Bible presents here concerning the urge of the Spirit, I want us to open this window to understand how, how, what kind of man we can be, depending on, on our spiritual state, depending on the spiritual realities of our life. You can be a natural man. A natural man, the Bible says, receive not 
the things of the Spirit of God. So, understand this. Some people are prevented. They can't receive the Spirit of God. Why? Because of their nature. They are natural men. Men by nature. Men that live according to their humanity. They are human nature. You understand? They can receive the things of God. They are prevented for that. They can receive that. They are exempt from the, 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 the spirit of God's realities. They can understand those things. The Bible says that they have the things of the spirit of God are foolishness into them. That means that when you talk about this thing of the spirit of God, they say no. It's, it's nothing. <laughs> There's no such a thing. It does not exist. They laugh at it. They joke at it. It's foolishness for them. Why? Because they are the, the way they have been built up, the way they are, their nature, you know, block them and blind their mind, their spirit, their eyes, and their spiritual sense, their spiritual uh, abilities to perceive this, the things of the spirit. So they don't believe in spirit. They don't know that invisible things exist. Let me tell you something before moving forward. Do you know that <laughs> even though you don't believe in it, we live with the, with the invisible every day? Most of the creation of God is invisible. The biggest part of the creation of God is invisible. Why? Because it does not occupy space. It does not occupy... Uh, there's no distance. Okay? Yes. It's the biggest part. The, the, the visible part of the creation of God is very limited because it occupies space. It requires time and distance. In the invisible, there is no time, there is no distance. That's why you have more spirits than human people. When you read the Bible, for instance, in Matthew 12, some people were pos maybe possessed by many, many spirits. Even when you read, read in Mark, uh, the Bible said that there was a guy possessed with a legion. The legion is between 3,000 and 12 units. A legion. So he was possessed by thousands of, of, of spirit in one person. So you have more spirits than people. The spiritual world is bigger. The invisible world is bigger than the, the visible world. Because that's where God manifests himself the most. That's, where, that's not where God dwells. Because God created this world this invisible realm so god is above it but this from where god revealed himself in the spirit so it's bigger and i give you an example <laughs> every day you deal with the invisible we deal with things that are not seen you have never seen the air you have never seen the oxygen but it exists you live with it you have never seen the wind but you deal with the wind it exists these are few things of the invisible what you what you need it we live by the invisible because you breathe things that we don't see. You breathe it. You, 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 you deal with sound. Have you ever seen a sound? You can see the sound, but sound exists. The voice, the noises are part of the existence, but they are invisible. But without sound, without voice, without sound, you can't live here. We need the invisible to live. This is few part of the invisible. You understand what I'm saying? So the electricity, for instance, the strength of the power of electricity, the electrical power is not visible, but it governs. That's what gives power to everything that we do. Right now, you're seeing me because of electricity, because you are connected. We can switch off, switch on our lights. We can have power for our computers, power for our house, power of electricity, electric power for everything that we do. But the power, this power is invisible and we believe in it. And you don't want to believe that God exists, that means that you are a fool yourself. That's why the Bible says this. I don't want, I want to read the Bible. I want to say that those who don't believe in the Spirit of it, those things are foolishness for them. That means that they are fool in their thinking that these things of the Lord does not exist. Because everything, even the invisible, is manifest. Look at all those strength, those power, those laws, the laws of gravity. It's invisible. But we live with gravity. God created those things. So you have many things that belong to the invisible. That prove that the invisible even sustain the visible. That I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. So that's the situation. So the natural man cannot understand that because he's blinded. He's a natural person. And the Bible says that neither can 
Know them because they are spiritually discerned. So the things of God, in order for you to understand God, to understand your, the, the, your life, you have a spiritual part of yourself, this which is also part of your life. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you can discover it. This is the Spirit. That's why Jesus Christ came to unlock the reality of the Spirit. Men were so blinded in their um, you know, understanding of God, their understanding of life, that they misbehave all the time. They couldn't please God. They couldn't. They, they couldn't, you know, be, uh, you know, uh, qualify according to God's standard because God's standard are spiritual. And I want to read a verse, for instance, in Romans chapter 7, verse 14. Let me read very quick before we come back to our main scriptures. And you're going to move on because you have uh, two more points to cover today. I hope you're going to finish that. So Romans chapter 7 and uh, someone shout hallelujah, someone say yes, hallelujah. So the Bible says this in Romans chapter 7 verse 14. The Bible said that, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. The law of God is spiritual. The word of God is spiritual. But I am carnal, I am sold to sin. That's what the Bible said. So, the law of God is spiritual it means that the standard upon which the foundation upon which the law of God is established is spirit. The word of God is spirit. Jesus Christ said that my words are spirit and life. So you, if you don't have the spirit, you can sustain this word. You can hold this word. You can, you know, it's 14 verse 14, not 13 verse 14. So you can, you can, Romans 7 verse 14, you can stand this word, you can hold this word. It's spiritual. You need the spirit to obey God. With that spirit, you can obey God. With that spirit, you can work according to God's will. God created men to be spiritual, not to be carnal or natural. Okay? So, you have the natural man. The natural man does not, he doesn't have the spirit of God. He does not know about this, the things of God. He's well-educated. He has degrees, is a well-known uh, person in the society, he dress well, it, it can be everybody that you know. It can be a president, it can have a, a very high position uh, 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 in, the, in the company, it can be, a, 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 you, know, uh, you know, a person like a well-known person. But without the Spirit of God, this person is like a foolish person. Like this person is for a foreigner concerning the things of God. To, to know the things of God, we need the Spirit. That's why Jesus Christ gave us the Spirit. The Spirit is our advantage on earth. Desire the Spirit of God more than money. Desire the Spirit of God more than everything else because through the Spirit of God, your life finds meaning and relevance in this generation. Amen. So the first kind of man is natural man. Are you a natural man? It's good to be a natural man. But if you're a natural man, you go to hell. Because let me tell you something. Man have, is the only creator, creature that have been designed to live according to someone else's nature. I repeat, man is the only creature. Animals have been designed to live according to our uh, nature. They are beast, beast, to the, 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 the fact that they are beast, their instinct. They have been created to live according to their nature because they have been designed according to their own nature their own likeness. So, man is the only being that has been designed on earth to live according to God's nature, not according to his nature. So, man have not been, has not been created to be natural. They have been created to be divine. They have been created to live according to God's mind, according to God's spirit, to, to, re, to react as God requires. They, they, they have been created to live according to God. That's, that's the thing. So you are not supposed to be natural. I'm not natural. The way I think now is not a natural person that speaks like that. And Christians, believers, those who have received Jesus Christ have been created to live in a supernatural way because they have received the Spirit of God. They live according to the nature of God. That's why signs and miracles must accompany those who believe in God. Those who relate with God. That's why Jesus Christ came to demonstrate. He came on earth as a man, but he was living as a God. He was talking with disease. 
sick people, be healed. And they were healed. Like God does. God made everything by word. God said, they let there be light. And Jesus said, let, be, let you be healed. Let be forgiven. That's how he was doing. He was doing like a God. That's why they stoned him. Be healed by the Spirit of God. Be delivered. He was casting out devils from people's body. No one can do that just like that. He spoke, he spoke, and that was it. That was it. So that's the lifestyle of a man. A regular man must act like in the likeness of God, must bury the image of God by the Spirit. Only by the Spirit we can do that. So he was doing those things. And I was saying that the, the law of God is not is, is spiritual, but we are carnal. The second kind of person that we see is a carnal person. You see it in um, the chapter 3 of... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep this one for next time. I'm going to keep the carnal person for next time. For now, I am just want to listen to the Spirit of the Lord. He want me to stay on the natural man. Okay? The natural man and... Uh, yeah. So the natural man, you know, uh, is a person that is subject to natural laws and, and is ruled by natural uh, realities. Everything that is his sense, the natural man is, is governed by his senses. The sense is what sight, hears, knows, tastes, touch, touches. So it lives according to the senses of his body. If he feels something, he goes with it. That's what we call the instinct. A natural man is governed by his appetites. His appetite may be sex. His appetite may be alcohol. His appetite may be drugs. His appetite may be all kinds of addictions. He is enslaved with it. And that's the problem of the natural man. The natural man is uh, ignor ignorant about God. And God does not create us to be to stay natural. Natural, being natural is the one I told you when I started the teaching that and the kind it was that you must observe true fact our spiritual state. Being natural, living as a natural person is one of the symptoms that proves that you are ignorant about God. When you are enslaved with your um, uh, nature, human nature, you can live above it, you can dominate it, you can overcome it. It's your first battle. Your first adversary is your nature as a human. A person that has been designed by God to look like God and to bear his image must be able to dominate his nature in order for him to embrace the nature of God. That was the first challenge of Adam in the Garden of Eden. He was supposed to be a man living according to God living at the likeness of God, bearing the image of God. So when you were looking at him, he was not supposed to look like a natural man. He was supposed to look as a man that is mirroring the dimension of God on earth. And that's where God calls us. Are you mirroring the dimensions of God spiritually? You understand? Or are you dominated by your natural nature? That's the question. I can stop lying. You are a natural man. I can stop having sex. I can control myself before sex. I can control myself before my natural senses, my natural appetites. The lust of my flesh governs me and dominates me. You are a natural man. A natural man are slaves of their, are slaves of their, of their nature. That's what I'm trying to tell. So God, through Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christ came in order for us to, to, to be aware of our state, our spiritual condition. Spiritually free or spiritually dominated. The natural mind is governed and dominated by the spirit of the world. It can resist the spirit of the world. The natural mind is enslaved, is, uh, you know, a, a victim of the spirit of the world. Why? Because the spirit of the world is stronger than the nature of a natural man. The spirit of the world have dominion over a natural man. Because the, 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 the way the settlement of the natural man does not allow, that don't allow him, the way it has been settled as a natural person does not allow him to overcome or to, to, to you know, rule over the spirit of the world. Why? Because 
you rule by spirit over spirit. You cannot rule by flesh. The spirit of the world is a spirit. It has an advantage over a natural man because the natural man is not governed by spirit. The natural man is slave of his lust, the lust of his flesh. He's not aware, the Bible says, he's not aware of the things. He does not receive the things of the spirit of the law of God. So he, he, he can't resist the spirit of the world. Because there is a confrontation between the two spiritual realm, the spirit of, of God and the spirit of the world, which is Satan. Satan governs the world, so then Satan subdues the world. Remember, in Matthew chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, when Satan tempted Jesus, he said that if you worship me, I will give you power, the power and the glory of the world. Because this has been given to me and I rule, I give it to everyone I want. Let me read that very quick when you talk about the spirit of the world because you don't. I want to give you proof of what I'm saying. Is in the Bible. You say you know the Bible is the Bible is our uh, book to understand life and to understand truth because it's the book that talks about the beginning and the book that talks about the end. The whole human civilization is captured in the Bible. No other books will tell you more about us. And what we experience right now on earth than the Bible. Okay? Because it's the book that God gave us by inheritance so that we may know the thing that belongs to God. That's what the, the Bible, the, the, the word of God and the, the things of God has been captured. Amen. So, um, when you read... Um, yeah. When you read... Yeah, the math, Luke, for instance, chapter 4, from verse 4, the Bible says, not from verse 5, the Bible says, And the devil taking him into the and high mountain, shielded, shielded him to, into him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil showed Jesus all the kingdom of the world in a moment of time. Could you imagine that? The devil took Jesus over high up in the high mountain and show him the all the kingdom of the world in a moment of time and the devil said unto him all this power I will give thee and and the glory of them for that is delivered into me and to whom I will give it. I will I give it? You understand what I'm going? What is going on? So all the power of the world, it, it, it positioned Jesus over the world. All the kingdoms, they did not say some. All the kingdoms of the world in the moment of time, and he says this. Um, I will give it to you if you adore me, if you worship me. I will give it to you because those things has been. Deliver, deliver to me and to me. And that's what happened when Adam fall. The, this power, this capacity over the world has been lost by him. He was the ruler of the earth. Man was supposed to rule the earth spiritually first and then physically in the visible realm. But it, because of sin, the person you obey becomes your master. So he obeys Satan by listening to satan instead of listening to god he became slaves of satan he became the ruler of this realm he became the spirit of the world that's 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 where the spirit of the world came from so satan is ruling the world our society our systems and he have his generals and he's working in with his army he's ruling and and he saw that he said that to jesus so yes if you want to overcome Satan, the, the spirit of the world, you need spirit. You need the power. Because Satan came to Jesus with power. But Jesus was more powerful than Satan because of the spirit that was inside of him. Amen. That's why somewhere in John, 1 John chapter 3, the Bible says this. The Bible says that verse 3, John 3 1 John 3, 3, Every spirit that confesseth not Jesus is not the, the, that Jesus is come in flesh 
Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit, this that the spirit of the Antichrist. Whereof we have heard that it should come and even now already it is, it is in the world. Verse 4. Ye are the God, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. They are of they are they are of the world, they are of they are of speaking, uh, speak sorry, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. And he does not, he that is of is not of God, hear us not us. Hereby know we are the spirit of truth, we the spirit of truth, and the spirit of error. So you have two types of spirit: the spirit of God, which is greater than the spirit that is in the world, and the only way to survive in our generation is to be reconnected with the spirit of god because the spirit of god is greater than the spirit of the world if you don't have the spirit of god in you you are swallowed up by this generation you are under the influence of the spirit of the world that's why you can resist the temptation of the world you can resist the mindset of the world you can have your principles but at some point the spirit of this world will swallow you up somehow because you have weak before the power of the spirit of the world before Satan. You cannot resist a spirit without spirit. It's impossible. Spirit fight by spirit. Spirit challenges spirit. And flesh challenges flesh. So a carnal man, and so repeat, a natural man does not live according to the spirit. He lives according to his nature. And thereof he is weak before the serpent. He is weak before the spirit of, 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 the, of the world. And he is swallowed up. He is a loser. Let me tell you the truth. If you are not a spiritual person in this at this time, you are a loser. You are a loser. It doesn't matter how beautiful you are, how bogus you say things, how you know uh, graduated you are. It doesn't matter those things. It's a matter of spirit. So there is a urge for the spirit of God. That's why I talked about the spiritual, the spirit of God's urge. There's an urge. Jesus Christ came to 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 set us spiritual people to make a spiritual people you have been forgiven you repent yourself from 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 sin etc you want to be repent to repent you want to receive jesus christ as a savior is going to make you a spiritual person a spirit spiritual person are different than natural person today i'm talking more about the natural the natural man the natural man is limited he's not smart enough to understand spiritual things. You don't understand spiritual things by education. That's why sometimes people go to, to the hospital and they want to diagnose a person, but they can't find the disease. What you can find with medicine, you can find it in the spirit. That's why sometimes people go there uh, to, to, to us, the hospital, they have conditions, but those conditions are spiritually related their, their their source is spiritual and you need the spirit to understand that you can read it with scanners and all those uh, you know devices medical devices it can't it can't tell you nothing because the source is not in the natural is in the spiritual the spiritual is greater than the natural and i want to tell you something many uh, satanic people and many people who serve the spirit of the world have understood the weaknesses of the man and the church and they manipulate people on the strength of the spirit because people are so natural. They don't have any awareness of the spirit because they are natural. They can't understand. They can't believe the things of the God. It's foolishness into them because it's spiritually, they are spiritually discerned. Many things you will never discern unless you are spiritual according to God. Amen. So today, uh, the teaching of the day, the urge, if you like, the urge or the, sp the spirit of God's urge is our general, uh, you know, topic. But the subtopic of the day is, uh, you know, uh, today you are touching the natural man, a man that is natural, you know, need the spirit of God, need a transformation. As a natural person, I remember many years ago, I was a natural man. I did not know about God. I was not believing that God exists and spiritual reality even the language that i use now i was 
I was, it was strange for me. I couldn't speak like that because I was a kind of person. I believe what I see. I, I, you know, I trust what I know by education, by, uh, you know, uh, relations, by, you know, as a human person, you know, things that I can feel are the things that I can trust. And when I, I, I desire in my heart, a greater life, a better life than this life, because I understood at a certain point, but there was a void in my life. Uh, something was missing because inside of me, I, I understood that I'm not only a physical person. There must be something greater because the way I coordinate myself and I live my life, I'm not the product of, of random things that just happen like that. I'm not the product of Big Bang, but it's everything is so well designed within me and around me. Maybe there's a creator and I, I, I approach God. I say, God, I don't know you, but where are you? Show me the way on earth and God reveal himself to me. You know, the things of the spirit are revealed. That's why our first verse of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, chapter 2, uh, sorry, uh, verse 10, two, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 says that, but God has revealed, God has revealed or revealed them into us by the spirit. For the spirit searches. All things, yeah, the deep things of God. God revealed us. So, spirit comes by revelation. Revelation comes from a Greek word, apocalypsis. Apocalypsis means action to remove a veil. Action to take off a veil so that we may have sight. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saying, so, most of us, without revelation, we have been covered by a veil. A veil of our human nature. The veil of ignorance. The veil of darkness. That has been provided, the darkness will have been provided by the spirit of the world to blind people. That's why the Bible says that if our gospel is hidden, it's hidden to those, to the unbelievers that have been blinded by the God of, the, of this world. I read that verse very quick. This is the verse that inspired this life. So the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verse uh, 3, the Bible says that, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, the unbelievers. In whom, verse 4, the God of the world, the spirit of the world, has blinded their, their, their minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. Amen. That's, that's the thing I'm talking about. So the natural mind is blinded because it can perceive, it can understand. Uh, everything has been made and done for him to be kept, to be kept blind and aware of the spiritual realities of his existence. He's more aware of the physical and natural realities. He need to pee, he need to eat, he need to sleep, he need a woman. She need a man, they need children, they need a job, they need to go to work, and that's all their life. They need to go to, 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 to the movie theater, they need to do, go to the beach, they need to eat. Everything is about eat, drinking, and having pleasure. That's all our lives today. This is a waste. Let me tell you, this is a deception. The real life is not about eating, drinking, having fun, hanging out with friends. That's the life of our modern society and is a man is the life of a natural man is a natural man lives according to the appetite of his life and many people have been enslaved in many kind of addictions when you see addiction rising in our society when you see drugs addiction rising when you see uh, the lust of the flesh uh, uh, promoted everywhere when you see everything that belongs to the natural promoted in the lives of men you understand that those people are enslaved in the uh, are slave of their nature. A man who cannot resist a woman, a woman who cannot resist a man, they can resist the appetite of their, of their flesh, the perversion of their generation. They must do per, uh, corrupted things, corruption. It's all about human nature, us, but there's no divine purpose, there's no eternal purpose through which you find, you find relevance. There is no divine agenda of our life. We don't know about God. We don't know about our unseen part, the unseen part of ourselves, which is the spirit. Many of us have spirit. All of us have spirit. You have a soul inside of our body, but you don't take care of the, 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 you know, the realities of our soul, the realities of our inner man. We don't even know about the inner man. We don't know about it. We are just 
living according to our lasciviousness, the flesh. Wake up, people. Today, Christ God's well being will want to awake us about our state, about the urge of the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God's urge in our generation. If you have not yet been baptized by the Spirit of God to be introduced to the spiritual realm of your, of your existence and your reality, it's not late. Jesus Christ came for that. Accept Jesus Christ. Open your heart to His Word. And let's get baptized by the Spirit. Let me tell you something. Differences between men are not on the strength of what they have on earth. It's on the strength of what they are in the Spirit. And I told you, in the Spirit, some people are known, some others are not known. Because some others are, are dead, some others are alive spiritually. And the natural man is dead spiritually. Yes, that's the problem. So, it's okay. Today was the natural man. Next time you're going to talk about um, two other kind of man, the spiritual man and the carnal man that we find in the verses. You're going to talk more about all those things. And Jesus Christ came to make us spiritual. He came to transform us, to shift us from the natural to the spiritual. You're going to talk about the spiritual man next time. And if you don't finish, if you don't uh, um, complete, cover all, you're going to push, continue the, 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 the next Sunday. But today, uh, if you have any question, feel free to uh, you know share your comment with us. If you have been blessed by this word, feel free to encourage us, to let us know. It's very important for us. And something you can do to help out this, share the link. The video is going to be available soon, but until then, until, now, until that time, you can share the link with your friends, with your brethren, with the people that you love. Um, uh, you are in a very critical season of humanity. Today, the realities of the Spirit are scarce, even in the churches, even in the, in the life of the people claiming to be believers. They are more natural than spiritual. They are more focused on the appetite of their, of their body, the appetite of their nature, and they don't live experience life, experience realities. They are, their knowledge of God is not experiential. Let me tell you something. The Bible says this, that no one can know the things of the Lord except the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of God that is in God. Yes, the same way the Spirit of man knows what is going on inside the man? So the spirit of the Lord is the same thing. So we need to be spiritual in our generation. Let me tell you the truth. The advantage is not about what you have, how much money you have in your bank account. It's part of life. It's not all about life. Let me tell you something. Uh, many people believe that they will be they will be at peace. They will be okay when they have money, when they have you know uh, a lot of wealth. It's not bad, but it's not like this life is not all about that. And I'm right here. I'm here to, you know, awake somebody that was asleep about this urge of the spirit. Spiritual, the spirit of God. There's an urge for the spirit of God. I mean, you understand? There's an urge. You have, been not, you have not been created to live as animals according to our nature, to satisfy all the lust of our flesh. You know, doing things just because you feel it. No, it's not just about what you feel. It's about what is essential, what is good, what is relevant for you on earth. What about what? What about you? It's about the target, the purpose of your life on earth. It's not about what you think today and tomorrow. Uh, you change your mind about it. It's not about this instability, not this you know uh, lack of balance about everything that we do. Because today you are true in the right. You are true, true in the thrown in the left direction you go left you are thrown in the right you go right you are going up and down left and right back and forth without you know um uh, without a, a vision without a mindset without a purpose you know and when i'm talking about purpose i'm not talking about what you want to do in your life no you have this kind of purpose but i'm talking about the reason of your existence the reason for which god created you that's the relevance that i'm talking about so only through the spirit of god we can be part of this you can discover it so um yeah this is 
I hope you have been blessed. I hope you have been encouraged. I hope uh, you have been, uh, you know, uh, blessed through this uh, uh, life. I hope, uh, you know, pray to God, approach God. The purpose here on Christ Gospel Echo is for you to approach God in a very personal way and discover those truths I'm talking about. Seek spirituality by the Spirit of God. Look for a, a spiritual, healthy life. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, all of us as men have been created to be spiritual. Next time you're going to talk more about the spiritual. But let me tell you something. Our natural nature, it's a deception. Life is not about the natural. Life is about the spiritual. So, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for the Lord be upon you. Uh, Jesus Christ is coming soon. And if you are a believer, grow in your faith. If you are a believer, be spiritual in this generation. If you are not a believer, I invite you on the behalf of the Lord to be baptized with the Spirit. To experience the Spirit of God. It, come, it, it, it happened to repentance. I remember when I received the Spirit, it was just I repent from my sin and I accepted to live the life of God um, uh, according to His, His ways, according to His patterns, according to His, His, His realities. And when I received the Lord, I accepted to live according to that. I repent, I turn, my, I change my mind and I received the Spirit of God within me. It came to me so gently and I started having this supernatural life, which is not natural. So we are not natural. Our advantage is not in the natural, but it's in the spirit of the Lord, in the supernatural. So that was the teaching of the day. That was the message of the day. God loves you. I'm not blaming you. The Lord is not blaming you about your condition. But if this message uh, touches your heart, um, and makes you move from inside. That means that there is a change. The ch a change is needed. Uh, re be reconciliated with God. Jesus loves you. He came to forgive our sin, but to also baptize us with the Spirit. That's what John uh, Matthew three verse eleven said. He came to baptize us with the Spirit. So God bless you. Uh, may the peace and the, the grace of the Lord be upon you. And before leaving, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray with you guys. And um, don't forget to share with us your testimony of what the Lord is doing in your life. When you receive the Spirit, things are going to move very fast in your life. You're, 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 you're going to dominate and overcome all the weaknesses of your natural, your natural nature. So be prepared for that. Your life is never going to be the same anymore. Lord God, I thank you for my brethren, for the followers, for the people with us uh, today. I thank you for their life. Thank you for this inspiration and this word. Lord, we want to experience the spirit, to experience the spiritual. Lord, we need your spirit. We understood that uh, being natural is a disadvantage in our era. And we want to be spiritual. We want to deny all kind of natural nature that enslaves us in uh, captivity that uh, subject us uh, Lord before the spirit of the world oh Lord we pray that you, you through this message and through your action uh, all kind of bondage of our lives we lose in the name of Jesus I pray for my brethren I pray for the followers oh Lord touch the life of a person today and let someone move from the natural to the spiritual today in the name of Jesus protect us Keep us uh, safe and aware of the spiritual all along the week coming. Lord Jesus, let everything, every day, get, be uh, uh, another step for us to get closer to our destiny. Near, you know, your will and the fulfillment of all your, your, your plan over our lives. Lord, we thank you. Bless everyone tonight. Bless our families. Bless the nations of the earth. Bless the United States of America. Uh, bless, O oh Lord, our countries. Bless 
Oh Lord, la, la Côte d'Ivoire, bless the Ghana, bless the nations of the earth. In the name of Jesus, I have prayed and you are blessed. Someone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. So you are blessed, guys. Um, that was Christ Gospel Echo for today. Um, thank you so much.